Hi everybody. Today is a follow-on from my last demo about the tenant to tenant Microsoft 365 migration that we did uh, using the coexistence with a different domain. I want to show you today how we would further that by doing a cutover of the Outlook client automatically once the migration has completed. So have a look at the previous demo just so, so you can see where we're at with the, the console setup and what we're doing. But now I'll jump into the console and let's take a look. Now this looks very similar to what you've seen before in the demo and we've got our five users set up for our migration. Um, what I want to show you is if I go into here and look at MSP Complete, this is a backend which is linked up to MigrationWiz. And you'll see that uh, if I look at the customers, we'll see there's our MIG client. And we go in here, we can see we've got two users, a couple of endpoints, which is all good. And in the users, we'll see that we have our set of people. The DMA status says not installed because we haven't put the agent um, anywhere near those machines or those people as yet. And indeed, if I go into the Deployment Pro console, you'll see that it talks about this being not enabled currently. Now, this is because the Deployment Pro console only comes alive after the first agent is, is installed on the first machine. Then we can go in and start looking at the settings and doing that. So let's, let's have a look how we might want to go ahead and do that. In here, if we just go ahead and click on the Cloud Meg client anyway, you'll see we get the option to deploy the agent either with group policy, which is obviously a preferred option. It's easier to get it out to all your workstations. But if you don't have um, any GPO set up to do that automatically, you can deploy the DMA through email or even actually just having a file on a USB stick and putting it on if that was necessary too. So if we do the deploy DMA through email, it's going to throw us back to the customer screen like this, where we can then select a user and or select multiple, obviously. And for this one, we're just going to be migrating Jan. So we'll do the enable device management through email and we get the option about how we want to send it out. I'm going to tell them that it's uh, from myself and you can customize, obviously, the email that goes out. I'm going to leave it relatively uh, standard for for this demonstration, but we just say send agent email and off it goes. Looking at Jan's machine then, you can see that the email has come through. So we'll click on that and we will click on the link to install the client. So we'll just go through that, obviously download it and open it. We'll get a notification down here saying that it's installing and obviously a notification when it's complete as well. So there we go. Now let's have a look at some of the file system because I want to show you how it actually looks on the machine as well. Let's bring up Explorer then and we'll see where it's actually installed itself. Now if we look at C drive and look at the users for Jan, we actually do need to go into app data and then into local and BitTypen. You can see we've got the agent there. Now I bring you in here because this is a good place to actually see the log file so you can track what it's doing. Uh, it gives you a, a lot of information in there. If you are doing any troubleshooting at all, it's just handy to know where this where this lives. The agent itself obviously runs out of here with these executables. And if we have a look at the reg key, you'll see that uh, under the normal Windows current version and run from the, the current user, uh, the BitTitan DMA uh, has this path. Uh, so you can see that triggers every time the user logs on. And in the task manager, we'll see that it appears as this set here. So then we know that it's definitely up and running. So it should have checked in already. So let's have a look at the deployment for a console and see what that looks like. Updating that quickly, we can see that Jan now has success for the DMI agent. So let's go back into the deployment pro and see what it looks like now. It should have come alive and it should say that it's enabled, uh, which here we go, there it does. So if we go in here, now you'll see that uh, we've got a bit more configuration we need to do because the deployment pro relies on the fact that it's going to change the profile. It needs to know what domain you're going to be changing it to. So we'll put in here migration frog and what the endpoint is. So we'll uh, grab that one which we had in our project setup. The rest of it we can leave alone. We don't need to change anything down here. There's plenty of options about how this cutover will actually work. Uh, you can upload a logo uh, to see what the deployment pro uh, picture looks like when, the, when it comes up for the users, when it does present itself and start prompting for a password. Uh, you can put a company logo there. Uh, just for reference, uh, it is, as it says, a PNG file with a 256K maximum. 
the resolution size you want to put on that is an 800 by 200. So uh, save so you looking that up later. Let's now then go back to the top and hit the save and continue. And we can see that, yeah, we have Jan here. The desktop name has come through. The agent has registered itself. Nothing scheduled. We haven't done any cutover planning or any migrations yet, so that'll stay. Uh, but that's basically a successful agent install. So let's just run back to uh, the customers here and we'll look at the cloud MIG. We can see we've gone into our users and once again, back to our status screen. And uh, pretty much we're ready to go with our migration now. So let's uh, get started. What we'll do now is we'll kick off a pre-stage migration for Jan. And this is a standard migration we're doing. Uh, nothing separate or different to, because we're using Deployment Pro. This is just to convert the mail user object into a mailbox. And we'll select everything from 30 days ago and kick that off. But what it will also do is it'll apply a license to that user and uh, and stand them up as, as a usable mailbox in the system. The forwarders are already in place between the two. The forwarders will carry over from the mail user object into the mailbox, so that's good. So we've just got that submitted. We will come back in once that's done. Now, after a refresh here, you can see that this migration has completed. What we're going to do now is take this as a Friday night event. So we're going to migrate this user to a full migration for them. And we want them to be automatically cut over when they come to their machine so that the profile changes over to the new tenant and everything is good for that user. So we're going to kick off the migration as normal here. And then I'm going to show you how to schedule up the deployment pro so it happens automatically after the end of the migration. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do that, and I'm going to just take you through those now. So first thing we'll do is we'll kick off this migration here to get that underway. And we'll do a full migration, which is start that. And then we'll jump into the Deployment Pro Console and have a look at this user here. Now this one is very easy because we have one user in this batch that we're doing the migration on. But suppose we had a batch of 100 people um, and we had multiple batches of 100 people and that becomes a bit more tiresome to go through and try and schedule these cutovers. So that's where we would use a grouping structure for it. So if I look at my other window here, you can see we've got these users. And what I want to do is just jump into groups because you can see we've got automatic groups based on the endpoints that we have. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a group from a migration with project. And we'll call this one, uh, let's call this Friday night migration and we'll grab the project. Now this will take the, the ones that we have and I'm just going to pick up this cloud mig, which is the main one we've been working on. So it's going to have a group of all of those five users. So in, in this example, we're just going to say we're going to migrate those five users in one go. So once that comes through, we need to give that a couple of minutes to do the processing and pick up those users. So uh, let's let it do that. So now that's finished its processing, if we just click on it just in here, you can see we do have our five users here. But where I want to manage this is actually in the other screen with the Deployment Pro. Because what I'm interested in here is all of the workstations that make up that particular group. So if I were to go and we just refresh to make sure it's got the latest info from that group structure in there. And you can see it's still showing only one person. Now that is because the only person we've installed the agent on is Jack. So that's why it's only showing up here. If we had installed the agent on the other four people, they would be showing up as well. But likewise, if we run the agent on a thousand workstations, we'd be showing a thousand people in here. So therefore, organizing a schedule for five people out of the thousand and trying to troll through and find those five is going to be a problem. So what we do here is we just have the filter and straight away you can see the groups come up and we can filter it on Friday night migration. So we're going to grab that and look here. Obviously, it's still the same person in this example because Jan is the only one that has, like I said before, has the agent installed. But you can see that if we had the agent installed there, we would see just those five people out of the thousand or 10,000 even people that would be in that list accordingly. What we'll do then is we just click here and we say schedule cutover. And we'd probably schedule it and say, OK, if it's going to run on that Friday night, um, we want to make sure that it has plenty of time to run. We'll probably start it like a 4 a.m. cutover. In this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a, a time and a date of 4.30 because uh, that, that's the, the closest time for this demonstration to, to make that work. So we'll just do the scheduled cutover there. And you can see you get the scheduled for 
item come up here. So what we do is we'd give it enough lead time for that migration to finish, for that schedule to actually work. We've already done the pre-migration. So we know that the credentials are good and the migration is going to work correctly. So uh, there's, there's a very, uh, very, very low chance of anything failing on that and, uh, and that kicking in. But here you can see that it's now also picked up what the destination UPN is and we are ready to go. We'll wait until that 4.30 timing um, and, uh, and the cutover should occur. So jumping back into the console here, you can see if I refresh that, it's just about finished. I'm dealing with some very, very small mailboxes here, and that's why I've managed to make the, the timing of them so close together. Um, normally, obviously, on a real migration, you'd have things spread apart by, by hours and, and have it working there. But you can see this one, as you can see, is, is just about to finish. If I, in fact, if I refresh a couple of times, it'll probably just complete. But what I'm looking for here is uh, everything to occur on the workstation itself. So I'm going to jump into Jan's workstation and see what it's going to be doing for us. Just quickly before I jump in there, you can see that migration is now completed. So our timing estimate that we had is correct, and we can now have a look at the workstation. And as we do that, you can see it's popped up, the timing is hit, and Deployment Pro is ready to go. So what we do here is we will hit Next, and it's saying, what do you want as your new password? Now these are the the password we'd set on the Office 365 tenant clearly when we created the mail user and converted to a mailbox that was a, a complex password which is a random one uh, this now gives us the opportunity to change that which I'm just typing in now and hit create and away it goes so there we are credentials validated successfully carry on and it will now do the the cutover now obviously it's saying we need to close Outlook so we will do that and Skype for Business and Link. I do recommend also that uh, if you've got Teams running anywhere, uh, you might want to quit Teams as well. Um, and once that's done, you can see it's actually uh, doing the reconfiguration. It happens very, very quickly. So we hit Finish here, and it will launch Outlook for us. Now what it does is it will obviously point to the new tenant. So it is asking for us to confirm that password again, which we put in and sign in. Now the user can do all of this on their own. They do not need any intervention as long as they've had correct instructions that have gone out for the migration process beforehand and they're obviously able to read the screen correctly and, and, uh, and put the right details in, they are not going to have an issue. You can see there's no actual reboot required or anything like that. It just requires them to shut down Outlook and then come back in and put that new password back in that they, uh, that they typed. So what I'm expecting here is we get a brand new um, cutover. You can see it's now looking at the, the migrationfrog.com instead of the, uh, the cloud migration online. And we have all our mail, which we had previously as well. And that really does consider this particular migration to be a success. With the agent in place however you'll notice that it doesn't actually uninstall it once it's done now this is because you could have multiple users you could have multiple profiles sitting on there and there could be reasons to re-trigger it and do other tasks so what we have is you can see in the registry it's still sitting here if I do jump back into the console we can look at from a computer perspective we can hit that tag and uninstall the agent now, this is something we'd probably do right at the end of the migration. We'd have all the computers listed there, and we just have one task, tick them all, uninstall the agent, and let it do its thing. If I do that, you'll see that uh, it will go ahead and uninstall the agent in the background completely silently, and if I do a refresh very shortly, we should see this, uh, this item disappear. And there you go. Uh, refresh and that is correct and if I jump into task manager you'll see that those items that were there which was the deployment pro items have now gone as well so that is now free of the agent and obviously we obviously can't trigger it again we'd have to reinstall it no problem if you want to go ahead and reinstall it you certainly can do uh, and if we refresh this screen um, it'll come back and report after a bit that it has actually uninstalled and there we go uninstalled so we're we are clear and good to go you can do another cleanup task and delete that entry off there but um you know that that's entirely up to you how you want to run that lastly i just want to thank you for watching thank you for getting this far into the video with me 
And uh, if you do have any questions on migrations and how we would do these things with the Migration Wiz suite, then please reach out. Please uh, drop me a note uh, either on this uh, YouTube channel uh, at thecloudgeezer.com or even on Instagram at thecloudgeezer. Uh, thank you again, and I'll catch you next time. Good night.